Hi everybody, I'm Sarah Cray and I teach watercolor and today we are doing our window flowers project. Oh. I have a little bit of a cold, please excuse my voice, but it's gonna be great. We have Keenan here Keenan taking the here. cameras and we're gonna be doing this project in six steps. So our very first step is we will do a quick sketch of our project. Our second step is we will be doing the stone. Our third step is we will paint our flowers. Our fourth step is we will do our shutters. Fifth step, we will use our pen to do line work. And our very last step is just details. We'll do some shading on our stone, any kind of touch up areas, all of that fun stuff. I thought those were wooden planks, not stone. Oh really? Yeah. I guess it could be both, huh? I like it as stone. I actually like it more now. Oh good. So I was initially, I was like, meh, this, meh. You're like, and wooden now I'm kind of like, ooh. Why would you paint that? Yeah, ooh, stone. <laughs> Okay, we're using four colors for this project. Our very first color is fuchsia. Our second color is yellow ochre. Our third color is tiger orange. And our fourth color is space blue. Now we're using our in-house paint brand, Dandelion Paint Co. They are liquid watercolors, which means they're dye based, which means they're super vibrant. And I love painting with vibrant colors. The downside to painting with dye based is they are fugitive, which means in direct sunlight, they will fade. But there are a couple things that you can do to protect your artwork. You can put it behind um, glass that protects it from UV ray. You can use sprays, all of that fun stuff. You can also scan. I actually scan a lot of my artwork and save it digitally and then mm. keep the rest in a drawer. So if you see my studio, all my paintings are just in piles in my drawer. That's true, there's actually several back here for just hanging out. The, wherever I go, it's just gonna be piles of paintings. It's fine, that's <laughs> how I do, okay? Um, we're using three paint brushes. We have a round two, a round six, and a round 12. Um, if this is your first tutorial with us, the two and the six are my go-to brushes. And then I started branching out into larger brushes because larger is just sometimes easier when you're trying to like paint bigger and things like that. But you can use whatever you have. Um, I also have a pencil here for sketching. And the pen I'm going to use to do my kind of detail lines is a, um, and excuse me if I say this wrong, a uh, Mangaka Flexible Zig Cartoonist from uh, Kuratake. It's a great pen to work with watercolors. And this pen was actually created for illustration work. So it, it works with watercolors and also alcohol-based markers. So like Copic markers or, or something like that. Um, so it doesn't bleed when it gets wet. It doesn't reconstitute, which is the pen, the kind of pen that you wanna use when you're using watercolors. So it's a great marker. Um, let's do our oath and then get started. Ready. If you can raise your right hand and repeat after me, I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. And I know it feels a little bit silly starting off with an oath, but I remember what it's like to learn something new. And usually we're scared and a little bit intimidated. And we play the comparison game and that's not fair because we're all on different journeys. And um, you should not compare your work to my work because we have different experience levels. Comparison is a thief of joy and I want you to enjoy this. So throw all of that away and just play, okay? Okay. All right, so our very first step is we are going to sketch. So I took a pencil. You can use a watercolor pencil if you want. Just remember that if you do get that line wet, it will disappear. So if you want things to stay on your paper, use something else. And I'm gonna sketch darker than how I would like you to so it shows up on the camera. You wanna sketch as lightly as possible to where you can still see the line, but remember watercolor is transparent. So whatever marks you make, you will be able to see under watercolor because it's transparent. You picking up what I'm putting down? I think I've heard you say it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what I wanna start with is I want you to recognize, some of you might be like, I don't know how to draw. Yeah. That's great. We're not really drawing. We're essentially just making basic shapes and marks on our paper. The other great thing is that I want this to have a sketchy feel to it. That means I want it to be a little bit wonky. Okay. So when I'm going in for my window shape, I'm not going for perfect rectangles here. This is like 
a cottage window on an old building that maybe has fallen down. Maybe it's experienced some hard times. So like... That could be all that's left of the building. It could be all that's left. Maybe there's a big chunk out of the window or the stone or cool. whatever. You know? Yes, totally. So let go of it being perfect because we don't want it to be. All right, so I'm just gonna start with doing a rectangle in the center of my painting. I'm gonna go about two to three inches down from the top of my painting, and I'm gonna have about an inch and a half, maybe to two inches on either side. Um, I cut my paper in half. Sorry, I should have said that. Mm. Cut my paper in half and taped it. I put it um, vertical. Thank you for telling us. You're welcome. Okay, and then I always look at sketching as an opportunity to change it. So I put in my rectangle, and then I'm like, uh, I actually want the top of that to be higher. So I'm gonna go in and make that higher. And then my flowers. I kind of want my flowers to be here. <laughs> that's it. Wow. Yep, that's it. That's all I'm gonna do. I'll probably erase this, but just like, we're just talking generals here, okay? This line I don't need anymore. And then now I can look at the overall placement of my window on my paper. Um, it might seem a little bit high, but maybe not. So a good way to see if your placement is kind of centered is you can actually use your pencil as a tool to measure. So eraser to the tape line is about that mark. Ooh, do you see that? That's really good. That is centered. Okay, and then you can do the same thing on the top. So how much space do I have from my window to my tape edge? Okay, and then I'm gonna do that to the flower bed edge. So you can see this is kind of where it's ending right here. So this might be a little bit up on my surface. Um, I'm actually okay with that. That's not a big deal. In my mind, I'm telling myself that I have some room to like go a little bit big with my flowers if I want. Okay. Or you can just move your window down a little bit. Maybe go about here. Hmm. And then let's measure that. And then that way the flowers should end about here. Nice. So all of this is part of the process. If you're having to make a ton of adjustments, that's normal. This is how I kind of sketch things out. But don't get so lost in this step that you forget to move on to the fun part, okay? Because we're not at the fun part. That feels a little bit better. What do you think, Keenan? I think it looks like a chef's hat upside down. <laughs> or a but mushroom. other than that, I think it looks great. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. I don't know why. I just keep wanting it to be taller. So I'm going to go with that. And I feel good. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is when I do my stone edge and paint my edge, I'm going to like let it be an uneven line. Think about stone. Think about how, for the most part, especially like think of like cottages, it's not a perfectly straight line. You know what I mean? Like some parts go in, some parts go out. Think of like the texture of it, how uneven it is, how it's rough. So that we're gonna translate that into our painting by doing an uneven edge. And that works out great for us because then we don't have to worry about like perfectly straight lines. Totally. And then think about, um, what is it called in a window? The, the crisscrosses in a window. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? I do know what you're saying. I don't know what it's called. I'm glad you asked. Okay. Now, if you look at this, I have some shutters, but they're kind of like open a little bit. So you can see a little bit of that window underneath. And we just kind of define that with our pen. We'll do that later. But here's my shutters. Again, maybe your shutters are broken. Maybe there's a big chunk out of the shutters. Maybe they're perfectly closed and there's no peaking window. This is your painting, okay? I have so many different ideas for the window. You're just loving it. I, do, I am, I love these ideas. Well. I'm gonna keep going with what I'm doing. Okay, keep okay. going ahead. I'll just keep thinking about them <laughs> to myself. Great. And then, I, again, I'm just gonna look at this kind of circular area as an area that I wanna keep mostly white because the flowers, I wanna show up. So if you look at my reference photo, in between the flowers, there's white spaces. That's because I didn't paint stone in this area because I knew my flowers were gonna go there. And on the areas where the color is overlapping the stone, it's not as vibrant, you see? Because mm -hmm. watercolor is transparent. So leave a gap where you think your flowers are gonna be. It's okay if they overlap a little bit, but just not the whole thing. 
All right, now we're ready to paint. I got my sketch. I'm gonna take my paintbrush, my round 12, and I'm gonna try and mix a neutral or a stone color. Um, to mix neutrals, you wanna mix opposite colors together. Opposite colors on the color wheel. I forgot to say that part. Mm. So if I'm looking for like a brown, I'm gonna start with some yellow ochre and some fuchsia. Let's grab some blue and some tiger orange. Let's see what we get. Okay, that's pretty green, right? Yes. It's, that... it's like a desaturated green. It's very nice. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna tone down the green, so I'm gonna add more fuchsia to it. Okay, now that's starting to feel more just brown. You see that? Yes, it's a soft brown. It's like a soft brown. I wonder like what would happen if I do more of a gray color. So to make oh. more of a gray color, I'm gonna take some space blue and fuchsia and some yellow. Okay, do you see the I... difference in colors between these? Yes, it's got like a purple undertone. It does, so when I'm mixing neutrals to get grays or blacks or brown, um, the undertone colors of my browns are always warm. So they're gonna be more like, how do I say this? I'm gonna mix more warm colors into it to get that warmness. So more oranges, more yellows, more reds. If I want my colors to be more cooler, so more gray, then I'm gonna have more, um, mix more cool colors when I'm mixing this color. That's why I started with my cools, my space um, blue is what I started with. And then I added a little bit of that fuchsia, which has a purple tint to it, and then a tiny, tiny bit of yellow, which is purple's complement to neutralize that purple. See what I'm saying? Yep. And then I'm just gonna mix these together. And let's just see the three colors I have, okay? My top color is this brown color. That's a great color. Middle color with the two mixed. It's more gray. Mm. And then... That feels good. That's nice. I'm gonna use all three of these colors to do my stone, okay? So I'm gonna take my round 12 and I'm just gonna grab some color. And I'm just gonna start working it back and forth. Now you see how I have some rough texture here? I'm not doing an even smooth wash and I don't want to do an even smooth wash. Cause think about the texture of like stone how there's so much variation in color, how some of it sticks out and goes in. I mean, if you were to touch it, it would kind of scrape your fingers. So I don't want it to be perfectly smooth like it sanded down. I don't want that. I want it where you're just like, I, I know that I would scratch my fingers if I try to rub it. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So that's what I'm going for here. That's why I'm letting my marks be a little bit rough and uneven. Now, if you're painting this and you're just like, no matter what I do, my line is so smooth. Dab your paper paintbrush on your paper towel to absorb some of the water, and then you'll get a rougher brush stroke, okay? Okay. So this is like sketching. And we're gonna use our pen to kind of like tighten things up, so I don't want you to get stressed. Wow, I really love the color I got on my stone here. I think I like it better than my reference photo. Nice. Yeah. Good. It's like not as saturated, right. and I think that lends itself to stone a little bit more. But if you get this, that's fine too. We're all gonna actually get a color that's very different. Don't look at that as bad. Look at that as, whoa, I put my own perspective and my own voice and uniqueness on this. I'm doing a great job, yeah. you know? The reference photo was just in near a muddy street, a busy muddy street, and that, That's right. that stone was dirty. <laughs> yep. Thanks, Keenan. You're welcome. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. That is step two. Now we're going to move on to step three, and we're going to do our flowers. Now I'm going to use either my round two or my round six for this. Um, now I like to do a thing called scribble flowers. Scribble flowers are essentially me saying, 
I'm giving you the basic idea of flowers without having to do details. Now, the whole inspiration behind this project um, is I wanted to point to urban sketching. Have you heard of urban sketching before, Keenan? I have. So urban sketching is essentially when you go out into the world and paint or draw what it is that you see, okay? So you do it right there. And it's supposed to be quick. It's supposed to be casual. It's supposed to be a little bit funky, okay? Now you might be asking, what is, how is that different from plain air? So plain air, and I wrote this down to make sure I got the, plain air means out of doors. Now the difference is when you do plain air painting, you're trying to do a whole complete painting while you're outdoors and seeing what it is that you're seeing. And it is more detailed and it is a little bit more finished. Where, where urban sketching, it's all about in the name, it's about a sketch. It's about it being quick. It's about it being a little bit rough. You can use just pens, you can use watercolors, you can use notebooks. Um, there's actually a, a ton of books about it. It's a fascinating, fascinating and beautiful way to approach artwork. I love looking through sketchbooks for um, urban sketching. It's gorgeous. And I wanted to capture that feeling, that feeling of it being like, no, I just, I'm having fun and I'm being loose and my lines are a little bit, you know, whatever. And it's, it's chill though. Like totally. that's the point. So when we do our flowers, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take like whatever color you want. And I'm just going to make marks that are kind of roundish and I'm going to lift up my brush and you see how I'm kind of just doing dashes. Yes. This is essentially what our flowers are gonna be. And then you can get it wet, and oh. maybe we drop in some other color in there, and we just let that bleed. So it's very much like wet on wet, roundish shapes, dashes and different marks. And we're gonna let them bleed in together. And maybe there's a few flowers that kinda, you know how they kinda like trail off. Yep. So basically, that will those will be our flowers. That's Makes an sense? amazing. Um, wet on wet right there. Isn't that fun? Yes. Okay, we're gonna do that, our whole thing in that. <clears throat> so I'm gonna start with my fuchsia and kind of looking where I had some white space. I'm gonna start with my six and see I'm just doing dashes that kind of overlap. Now in the center, they're gonna overlap more than on the edge. On the edge, I'm gonna do some more like smaller dashes, but in the middle, you see how they kind of just all bleed together to form one thing. That's what we're going for. So let's drop in some purple. And I actually, when I do the edges, if I'm using a six, I'll switch to a two, because then it's easier for me to get these smaller marks, you see? Very nice marks. Yeah, I'm just mix it up. And then let's do like, now the only, the only little bit scary thing with this is that I'm using a bunch of different colors. And some of these colors, if they bleed together, will make mud. Like if I touch mm. that yellow with my purple, it would turn to brown because those are across from each other on the color wheel. So, and sometimes that's okay. Like sometimes that's not a big deal. And sometimes maybe you don't want mud. So what I like to do is I like to do different chunks. And then um, I'm gonna mix a green to be as like the, the like green part, like the leaves and stuff. And that's the part where I can mix in and kind of let bleed. So maybe there's some more green down here. But just kind of like play and just kind of see what happens. Ooh, I love how that's looking. And I'm gonna do more pink over here. Cause when yellow and pink mix together, they make orange and I'm okay with that. Um, let's do some more purple. I love that red orange. And now I want this to feel a little bit more overflowing than how it currently feels. So I'm just gonna like touch some wet water, some wet <laughs> water, 
They need to As stay opposed wet. to dry water. We sell dry water <laughs> on our website. Don't you ever wish your water was dry? <laughs> we yeah. got that for you. <laughs> so I'm just kind of messing up a little bit what I put down. And this is doing two things. It's making the colors run, which is creating a different value. And it's making the area a little bit bigger, a little bit fuller, which is kind of what I want. It, it feels a little too contained for me at the moment. So let's... Uh, Make some adjustments. There we go, okay. Ooh, I love, okay. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do some kind of like leaves and flowers kind of like coming off of here. So maybe this is like a stem. And if, you're, if you've been painting for a bit and you're like, listen, I, I, I don't feel that good about my leaves, which there's no judgment there, leaves take some practice then don't worry about putting leaves in. Do little flower dots, you know, like adjust this project to what you want to do. And there's nothing wrong with that. I really love how this is bleeding all together right here. Do you see that? Yes. It's beautiful. I'm a, I'm a big fan of the bleeding on these paints. Me too. You said they're fugitive. Yes. That's all I wanted to say. It's actually funny. My mom was in town the other week. She's like, Sarah, you said these paintings are fugitive. She's like, what does that mean? I'm thinking like they're bad, you know? <laughs> and I'm just like, no, that's just a way that some people say that they're not light fast. And I think that sometimes liquid watercolors get a bad rap for that. Um, because we think, well, we want artwork to preserve for a long time, right? Like I want this to last a long time. But for me, I mean, I started painting not because I wanted my artwork to last forever. I just started painting because I loved it. And the experience that I got from using vibrant colors was so fun that it kept me painting that way. And then now that I know that, you know, liquid or dye-based paints don't last forever or you don't want to frame in direct sunlight, then when I'm making original artwork that I want, that I know will be on a wall with light, that I know will, I want to last a long time, I will make sure that I use um, light fast paints. And so that way I still get the experience that I want to experience, um, but I know what tools I need to use when. Or the other thing that I, I actually do, and I did this when I did commission work, is I would paint them in the liquid watercolors and then I would um, make a print of the original and that is what the person got when they got a commission was the print because mm. prints will last. So um, there's different ways to solve problems if you are experiencing some problems, you know? Like how do I keep doing it, something? It'd be really cool too because every painting, no matter how many times you do it, it's always different. Uh -huh. But it'd be really cool to do the same painting, one with these watercolors and one with a light fast paint. Yes. And put them in the same spot and see how different they change, how much they change, I should say. Oh, I like that. That'd be fun. Yeah. And it's so funny because when I said that to my mom, she was just like, you know, like, I actually have had, and some people I've talked to was this experience too, where they were like, I've had paintings on my wall from liquid watercolors that have been in sunlight that haven't faded. And then there are some where like they haven't even been out that much and they have faded. Mm. And I've experienced that too. And I think it just depends on the colors and the dyes that are used. Um, but I haven't found total consistency in it. So, and like I said earlier, a lot of my paintings just sit in a drawer. So I don't need... <laughs> Like none of them have faded because they just like hang out in my drawer in the dark. They're just there. They're just there. <laughs> but um, so maybe you guys have had that experience where you have seen it fade. And maybe some of you are like, actually, not really. So. Okay. Now I'm looking at the colors that I have here on my background before I do my window. This was not a step that I put out in the step by in these steps, but I just want to like show you my process. I do not love how even in color this ended up being. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. 
it does seem all one color. Ah. And I'm really missing the variation that I feel I got here. The wood look. <laughs> this don't, this don't look. It's not wood. It looks amazing. <laughs> it just automatically goes to wood for my head. That's okay. I'm fine with that. Thank you. I'm good. I'm glad. <laughs> You're like, because it's not up to you. It's, it's, like, my, it's I, my brain. I can't change my brain. Okay. So because this all kind of blended into one color, I'm just going to throw another color in here. Oh, the dry brush stroke. Now, the scary thing about dry brush stroke. Oh. Maybe not scary, but something you need to be aware of is that because we're using the same brush size for it, it's really easy to make the same marks over and over again oh. and create a pattern without recognizing that we're creating a pattern. So that's why I'm not doing this. I'm doing this. Oh, like I'm purposely making my stroke smaller, thicker, like uneven. So then I don't accidentally get a pattern that I wasn't trying to get. Okay. Oh, okay. That feels better to me. And like you guys can decide too, where you're just like, I want this to go more towards that, this yellow color. I want this to go more towards that red color. You have all the options. And can I show you something mm -hmm. really interesting? Yes, please. If we're looking at this side by side, the color of this stone feels more pink, right? Right. Or red. What if we eliminated that? Does that stone still feel as pink? No, it feels more brown. Right? That's insane. It is insane. And I'm, I'm calling attention to that because when you're painting and you're looking at a reference photo, some differences are so obvious simply because they're right next to each other. Holy cow. But as soon as you take that comparison away, and if you look at this with fresh eyes without trying to make it look like that, then you can get a better understanding of what it is your viewer will see. Because your viewer is not gonna be like, let me see that reference photo. Let, what did you paint this off of? I gotta see. They don't even have any idea. And so like sometimes we get so down on ourselves because we're just like, this isn't matching, this looks different, pa. When like, that's not even really a problem. Take away the reference photo for a second. Look at your painting from far away for what it is, not how you're comparing it to mine. And then you can decide, is this color actually a problem? Or is it just like a brown? And that is how my viewer will see this. That's cool? crazy. Cool. I, it keeps changing. I know. Look. Pink. Pink again. And then the reference photo has more green in it. And super yellow green, right? Yes. Yes. Wow. Anyways, all of that is to say it's not bad to want it to be different and it's not bad if it is different. I just want to call attention to the fact that these will play off each other when you're looking at them next to each other. So if you want to get a realistic understanding of what is happening, take this away for a minute. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, but, but can I like call attention to my flowers here? Yes, please. Because I love them. I know they're alive with joyous Look stone at these surrounded wood bleeds. I know. And it, I love the green actually. I think the green might be my favorite part. Yeah. Oh, it looks so full. I actually, oh gosh, I love how that turned out. Okay. We're doing great things. We're moving on. Now I'm gonna move on to step four. I'm gonna do my shutters. Now, um, my window underneath, you can leave that white, or if you wanna give it a little bit of color, like you see how you see the little window in between? Yeah. You can do like a light wash underneath just so it's not paper white. The old barely there color. The barely there color, just to give it so it's not like stark. And maybe if you want to give it like a blue hint, you know, like glass or something. Mm. But you want to make sure this area is totally dry before you paint your shutters so your shutters don't bleed. So you can like walk away and get a snack or you can use a little heat tool. Did you bring any snacks? No. Kenan, I got a microphone up to me. I can't eat snacks. Same. I wish I could. 
That's how you know I'm filming or like with video because I don't have food. Every other time I have food when I'm painting. True. I don't want to make you guys listen to me chew food. Not a good ASMR experience. Keenan's like, no, thank you. I, I don't want to hear that. All right. Now we're good. Now I'm going to do my... I'm going to switch this palette over so you can see my blue. So I'm taking my space blue and this is a great color, but I wanted it to have tones of green, like under, under it, I wanted green. So I have my space blue and I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow ochre. The reason why I'm going with yellow ochre as opposed to tiger orange is that the yellow ochre has undertones of, um, how do I say this? It's going to make my color desaturated where if I do space blue with straight tiger orange that's going to be a bright green it's going to have like more vibrancy to it where the yellow ochre is going to kind of tone down the colors and if you're just like well I don't know enough about color theory to know what's going to do what you can always just mix and test it on a scratch paper you don't have to know every move the color is going to make before you do it you can just like test it before you commit to it. Oh my gosh, I love this color. Yeah, that's a great color. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna go kind of to where my shutters are gonna be using my six and remember my edge is uneven. I'm kind of following the line I put out, kind of not. Remember, we're going for a sketch here. That means you can see the brush strokes, right? Like we're not about perfection. I'm gonna just try and straighten this line. And again, maybe you got some broken shutters. Mm -hmm. Now where it's touching the stone or like that edge that's closest to the stone on the side and the top, I'm gonna to drop in some stronger blue because I want it to feel recessed. I want it to feel like back Get and you. the stone is hanging over. And so we push back our window and our shutters by making it a darker value. That's how we move something in space. And maybe we can even start doing some like lines here. It's pretty wet, so it's gonna blend out, but like at least getting the gestural feel of lines of shutters. Okay? Mm, then that's nice. We're gonna do the other Man, side. Man, that is a great blue. Isn't it beautiful? Do the same thing on the other side. So I'm kind of like meeting, just using water to spread out that color that I first laid down. And your blue might run into the flowers and bleed a little bit. That's okay. It's not a big deal. I'm just being a little bit gentle when I'm touching my flowers. So again, I'm dropping in the color along the edges to give that kind of hint of shadow. Man, that's and then crazy. while it's wet, if you want to do a little bit of horizontal lines, again, to kind of like hint at the fact that there will be shutters, but they'll bleed out and that's okay. We want them to. And I feel like I need to do one more layer of dark. Yours might not need this. And I'm pretending like there's a, a window seal underneath my shadow, shutters that are the same color. That's why I'm connecting them. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But you don't have to. It's almost like a the paint sill underneath. Oh, that makes sense. Is that accurate? I honestly don't it know. It is now. It is now. I don't think I was looking at a specific reference photo for this. I think I just went for it. Nice. And then this is where if you're just like, okay, I need to adjust the size of anything or maybe, I don't know, you want this edge to be more uneven, you can, you can make some adjustments. Like, let's make that way more uneven. Why not? Okay, that feels cool. 
Now, because we have an uneven edge, ooh, I need to do it at the top. Did you notice that? How it's smooth at the top, but not along the edges? I did not notice that. Well, I just did, and I don't want that, right? Because I want there to be continuity between the stone textures. Oh. There we go. Whew. It almost looks like a torn piece of, like a hole is in the paper. Oh, yeah. That's like peeking through? Yeah, it's super cool. Okay. That's just our shutters right there. Nice. Yeah. Now, it's so funny because I'm looking at my reference photo and I'm looking at my painting. And it, like, my mind is screaming that the colors are so different. And it's just, like, funny. I just want you, to, I'm calling attention to that to say, you're not alone if that's what you're experiencing. Mm -hmm. We're like, I even painted this and I'm like mentally beating myself up that this is a different color. But I'm saying this out loud because I wanna comfort you and I wanna comfort me at the same time, which is, it is okay that it is different. That is the point. And um, if you wanna play with adding a little bit more color here and there, feel free to, this is your painting. The worst thing that can happen is you gotta throw it away and start over, which really isn't that bad. No. I'm gonna throw a little bit of like yellow green in here. Oh. So I'm basically just taking like my yellow ochre. But I gotta be careful, I just touched my blue. You see all that blood? Yep. All right, let's see what that looks like. Kenny, can you move to overhead? Yes, I can. Ooh, I kind of like that. I do too. You like the warmth on the edges? Yep. I'm gonna do a little bit more here. With that extra kind of yellow green color, it kind of gives potential for having a vine go down the wall. Oh yeah, that would be cool. Okay, that feels better. It's still not nearly as yellow green as a reference photo, but I like that color. I do too. That makes me feel better, okay. So now what we're going to do is you see how like when I dropped in that dark value, it's kind of bleeding along here. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to like pull a little bit from that for my shutter lines again. Cool. Because even though it is sh a shadow, I, it's still shadows on shutters. So I don't want it to feel separate uh, from the shutters itself. So I'm taking where there probably would have been a hard line right there mm -hmm. and just kind of moving and blending it out. Now what we're going to do is we are going to dry our painting. I never know if we keep these parts in. Me either. I'll just make sure I look pretty during them. Just lock it in. Yep, there it is. That should be a still shot. Saved for emails. <laughs> That's terrifying. Or maybe another one. <laughs> Gotta dry it fast. Gotta dry it fast. Is your painting dry? <laughs> so ridiculous. What am I even doing right now? Okay, now that that is dry, we can do our line work. So this is totally up to you. This is a step that you wanna take, um, but our theme with this box is rhythm and wonder. We're kind of combining the looseness and the wonders and um, celebrating watercolor and how doing something kind of more rhythmic and structured and black lines, how they can actually work together, even though they're kind of opposing concepts. So I'm gonna take my pen and I'm going to kind of just like outline what I just did and give it some detail. So um, I'm just gonna take my marker and I'm gonna just gonna go along the edge and just kind of like follow essentially 
what I did. And remember, this is sketching. It, so it does not need to follow exactly. Okay. And now we're going to do the line work in our stones. So I'm just going to like come up with a thickness and um, kind of visualize where I want that thickness to go. So I'm going to start with this line here as if like this is a line of stone. And then I got another one up here and you can lift your pen up. Okay. And now I'm like, okay, this thickness is now the thickness for like most of my stone moving forward. So you can just use your fingers and be like, burnt, burnt. Okay. Here's a line, burnt, burnt. Here's a line. Remember, it's not about making sure it's perfect. This is general, general shapes here. General shapes. Oh, we should probably have them line up across from each other, right? Uh, not necessarily. As long really? as they're the same thickness, not the same thickness, but as long as they line up on the top and bottom, the middle doesn't necessarily have to be the exact same. That's perfect because this line absolutely does not line up. Great. Great. Because if it's stone, they stack on stack on stack, different thicknesses, different shapes, different sizes. My uh, house's foundation is stone and oh. there's nary a uh, continuous line <laughs> to be found. <laughs> Kevin's like, I've learned from experience. Yes. Now this looks real. <laughs> okay. And then now what I'm going to do is, you know how like bricks or stones, they kind of like, uh, what's the word? Stack. Stack them, but alternating. Uh -huh. So all the lines aren't the same. So, okay. So here's a line and let's say here's a line and you can start light first and then like darken it. And let's say here's a line. And then on this top one, my line is going to be in the middle. Ah. Like that. And again, it doesn't have to be like perfect. You know, it's just like maybe this one's here. Maybe this guy is like It's an here. old wall. Maybe a stone is cracked. Yeah, like there could be, listen, there could be so many things going on. It's just like giving the hint. And it doesn't even have to be like this detailed if you don't even want it to be. My rule of thumb is basically just like start out with little bits at first. You can always add more. And then what I like to do to kind of make this stone feel a little bit more real is like where they meet. Think back to our uh, neurographic project. Not mm. on every connection, but on some connections, there's some gaps. Especially when we get along the edge here. Yeah. Okay. So I just like to go in and kind of like accentuate some of those and be like, no, 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 this is real. This is a real stone. Look, a gap. Convinced? I am. <laughs> now you are. Now it looks like stone. <laughs> and then we're going to go through and do our line work on our windows. So I'm going to do the shutter. Shutter edge. And if you want to go in and do like the little window pane underneath, you can. Boop, boop. Just a hint. And then for these shutter lines, I'm just doing horizontal lines. I'm trying to keep them as straight as possible. Some I'll start near the corner and some I'll start near the middle. But again, maybe, maybe you got some broken shutters. Maybe you got some gaps. We're, we're about sketching here. This is all about just playing and sketching. Shutters, bam. Okay, nice. now flowers. Maybe some of these have just like little flower shapes. So I'm kind of just doing like curves. So just on some of these, I'm kind of outlining, but not on all of them. I don't think it needs it on all of them. And the detail work with this just makes it come to life even more. Yeah, it just gives it a little extra something. Yeah. So I'm just kind of going through and kind of like roundish. Maybe there's some leaves coming out here. I don't know. Like just kind of play with it. Maybe you want to even just draw some flowers and leaves just with your pen. Like you have full freedom here. You can do whatever you want. Okay. And our very last step is I'm going to go through and add a little bit of a shadow on some of my stones. Now, 
This project is interesting because I did my wash and then I did ink and then I'm gonna do some wash again. And that's why it's great using pens that don't reconstitute because it gives you that freedom to go in and out, okay? So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna mix just a darker brown, gray, just kind of a darker value than whatever I have here. Let me pull this in. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, and then just again, if you can use your 12 or your six, I'm just gonna kind of go through on some of these areas and I'm drying my brush off because it was too wet. And just adding a little bit of shadow on some of it. So it's not an even wash, I'm just hitting some parts of the brick here and there, or the stone. Kind of, if you're starting to notice a pattern, like for me, I'm like, dun, dun, dun. that feels too consistent. So I'm gonna go in there and mess it up. And I guess I'm just trying to add dimensionality to this stone without it feeling too detailed. Mm. And again, like I'm looking at the top, this right side feels pretty good. I like the bottom. This feels pretty too like even for me. So guess what? Uneven. Uneven. Mess it up. I don't care. We're just playing here, you know, like not a big deal. Maybe there should be a little bit extra underneath the flowers because like maybe the flowers are casting a shadow, you know? Just be mm -hmm. careful. Your pen won't reconstitute, but your flowers sure will. So be careful of that color. Ooh. Dang, that's nice. I love how that turned out. Yes. All right. We did it. Wow. That's our project. That's lovely. I hope with this project, one, you had fun. We were celebrating and I'm introducing to you this kind of idea of urban sketching. And it's just like, I feel like it's a fun approach of painting things outside. So if, if you have a little notebook, maybe it's even just your watercolor pad, just like go outside and like paint, sketch a tree and play with your pen that you have and see what is it like if I do detail marks? What if I just do this? Like this is a low key approach to, to trying to paint something in real life because that's a different skill. Um, the reason why it's different is when you're painting from a reference photo um, or a photograph, you're taking something that's already been smushed into something two dimensional like a piece of paper and recreating it it's harder to go out in person and paint it from life because we're taking something that's a three-dimensional world and we're the ones having to do the hard work of compressing it into, onto a two-dimensional surface. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Um, but it's great practice. It's a wonderful skill and that's what it is, a skill that just takes time. So I hope that with starting with something like this, you guys have a little bit more um, confidence to go try it for yourself. It's not going to be perfect every time, but it shouldn't be. It should be fun though. It should be interesting it and should it should be. be an opportunity for you to play and try something new. Um, if you need any of these supplies, find them at letsmakeart.com. You can find us on Instagram at let's go make art, hashtag let's make art watercolor. We also have a wonderful watercolor group on Facebook. That's called let's make art watercolor. And, um, Thank you so much for taking the time to paint with me. You know, time is one thing that we can't uh, get more of. True. And I'm truly so grateful that you choose to spend your time painting with us. It really is a big deal. So thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Keenan. Thank you. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye.